everybody, welcome back to another edition for a movieguy.com's Hot Seat interview. I am your host, Leo Brady. I am incredibly excited to be here today with a incredibly talented artist. Uh, this is somebody who is so multifaceted, actor, model, musician. Her music's amazing. I hope people will go listen to it after they get done watching this interview. This is, we're here to talk about her film, uh, Cold Meat. We are with actress Nina Bergman. Nina, thanks for being with me. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to yeah, be here. Is, yeah, this is great. Um, so we start this in, this interview series by always asking, what is a movie or movie moment for you that made you say, I want to be an actor? Oh, it wasn't a movie moment for me. It was, yeah. a, I mean, you know, I was four years old. Right. So, uh, yeah. And I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of TV when I was a kid. So it wasn't <laughs> movie for me. It was um, being four years old and I had uh, a, a very established Russian grandfather who was an actor and a gypsy grandmother. And I went on stage to give her a flower yeah. you know, after her show. And then I had to do a little curtsy and everyone was clapping. And I just felt all of this love. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You, you immediately got that hit. <laughs> so, and then I just love performing, you know? So it started like, I, I was always a performer. Yeah. So it wasn't a movie that made me want to do it. It was just the performance and playing different characters and, you know, using my imaginations to disappear. That was my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're certainly, you're so good at it. I mean, your journey to get to where you are now, I mean, uh, Again, as I mentioned, you you're talented at all of these uh, things, um, okay. but it's been, but it's been this like winding path for you. Like you, you're born in Denmark, as you said, you traveled to Europe with your grandmother, uh, and then you're you did acting at the Bolshoi Theater, uh, and then you kind of got your start in New York as well. I have to imagine that sort of kind of created a product of of you being multifaceted. It, it's kind of like you it ingrained into you a little bit that like you can't settle down right it's like the shark can't stop swimming kind of <laughs> approach right uh yeah you can say that you can say that yes yeah i mean because it's like yeah because i just think like moving around acting music there it's hard to combine the two it's hard to do both at the same time but it's really all the same muscles right yeah i mean they're different but it comes from the same place yeah. you know at, at least me i mean i don't know how people like jared leto does it you know he seems to have it figured out he goes and tours with his band and then you know takes some time off and focuses on just the music and you know i wasn't able to do i try to do both i think maybe if you know i get you know as i grow and become a little more established maybe i can do both again and do it like the jared leto way you know take some time off and just tour and then back to filming you know, yeah. that would be great. But I am using my music in, you know, soundtracks. I have another project where I'm going to be doing a lot of the music. So I'm I'm still, you know, I didn't stop. I'll never stop being a musician. Right. Um, I'll still do just the touring. That's hard. It's hard to be gone for three to six months. Yeah. Yeah. There's only like a few. I mean, I think Jared Leto and uh, even Keanu Reeves, right, with Dog Star, like he's been able to sort of do that a little bit. Like I think they've had like reunions in a way. But it, but as you said, yes. it's really hard for people to to get both done and uh yes. yeah we got to figure out a way to make it make it work you know because because honestly yes. you're so good at both um uh, looking at your filmography I mean it's safe to say I, you might correct me is one of your biggest moments was connecting with Jesse V Johnson I mean you you, you kind of get your start on the in the beautiful ones uh, and you did you know sort of that moment of meeting with him and getting started with him that he would be a director that you'd work with multiple times? Um, well, Jesse knows this. He was on my vision board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Um, Jesse Johnson was, I saw one of his movies, Charlie Valentine, when I first came here and my manager represented him. And I was like, I must meet that man who made that incredible movie for very little money. Yeah. And then we clicked, and then he hired me to play his Wonder Woman. Before Wonder Woman was out, we did um, a short film that right. leaked on the internet, and it was kind of like um, 
it's a big thing at the time um um the start of like the whole wonder woman you know frenzy back up at that time there wasn't anything about wonder woman right. and then we we just were looking to find projects to work together and then you know uh my dream came true when i did hell hath no fury i was like i manifested you jesse <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm so glad you brought that movie up too, because like you're you are leading me to my next question. That movie, Hell Hath No Fury, was the movie where I discovered you. I had never seen you in many movies, and I watched that movie, and it's safe. I think it's safe to say it's one of your best performances. It might be your best performance. It, we'll we'll see. Your career is still. Well, you still, haven't seen you haven't seen the new movie yet. That's oh, come back okay. to me. Okay, yeah. well, I've seen Cold yeah. Meat. I've seen Cold Meat too. Yes, but you like you like the Hell Hath No Fury. They're both very I mean, different. They're different. different. It's two so different. different. So so different. But so in Hell Hath No Fury, you play this sort of prisoner in a way. At the commitment that you had to that, right? I mean, did you shave? You shaved your head. You kind of like you're just like in the mud and getting beat up and all of that stuff. For you, was that sort of a crowning moment for you where you were saying like, I I know that I can do this. I know that like, I'm, I know that I'm good at it too. It's not just like, you know, showing up on set or background character performance or anything like that. This is like showing actor, showing other directors that like you should be the star in a lot of movies. <laughs> Well, for me, it was, uh, you know, uh, I because it was based on a true story with Hell Hath No Fury, yeah. I was um, determined to honor these women, you know, because they were unsung heroes in Hell Hath No Fury, yeah. those women. And I wanted to tell their story in the most authentic way, because remember, these were real lives. This happened not too long ago, and I watched all of the videos and went and saw the remains of some of the, you know, uh, concentration camps. And so for me, it was always like, oh, I need to do more. I need to do more. I want to, right. you know, because how do, how do I honor these women, right? By doing it the most, by playing it the most authentic way that I can. So I always felt like, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I need to do more. I need to do more. So I left, you know, um, after shooting it, like, Oh, I could have done a little more. Maybe I could just have squeezed a few more drops out, <laughs> you know? Right. So that's how I felt. Um, it was never my intention to like show um, what, you know, that I'm good or what I could do or, you know, that's, and that's never been my intention. My head's, my intention, I always compete with myself. My right. intention is to show up, do the best work I can, go as far as I possibly can, give myself a hundred percent and then, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, and that's up to, to the audience. And then hopefully it will resonate with people and then you're on to the next one. And then you do, I, I put myself through that torturous uh, um, experience once again. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And then, and then it goes on to Cold Meat, your newest film, yeah. which we're, which we, I have to talk to you about. This is like, as we said, it's a totally different performance it, it, it's such a cool movie. It, you know, I've never seen a movie done like this. Um, how were you brought into this film? How did you sort of, did you have to audition for the role as Anna? And uh, talk about connecting with your director, Sebastian Drone-in. Uh, drone drone well, he uh, he saw me in Cold Meat, and I think the company saw me, and no, I mean in a Hell Hath No Fury. Yeah. And he was talking about that, um, uh, I remember he mentioned that um, as a director, he looked for transitions in, um, in an actor, like how we, you know, the transitions yeah. and he did not see my transitions. Um, and you know, that, that was the things that he looked for and he thought I had what it took. So it was a straight offer. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the hard work did pay off in that sense. Um, yeah, yeah so it was, it was a straight offer and, you know, I didn't meet the director until it got to Canada on set. Yeah. Um, um, so that was the first time I met him and my co-star Alan. Yeah. So uh, and and luckily, I mean, we all clicked. Uh, we we all cut from the same cloth. We all, you know, wanted to make the best movie. And this movie is set like a play. You know, when I read it, it read like a play. And I'm a theater actor. I come from the stage. So for me, yeah. it was like, 
you know, a play in a move set in a movie. I mean, it couldn't, you know, it couldn't be better. Yeah. Well, and I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, your your character is for the most part in the backseat of a car. At one yes. point, at one point, you're in a diner, you're in the trunk of a car, you're in the backseat of a car. But did did the setting and sort of, as you said, the stage of this movie make it harder, easier? What did it feel brand new and, and exciting to be able to work in that small, tight space? I mean, I, I would have felt maybe even a little bit of claustrophobia at, at some points in my, you know, in my own fears. Well, you know, if you were an actor, I would say use it because Anna is, you know, very claustrophobic and trapped and, um, you know, I'm losing her mind a couple of times, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in that way, it was brilliant because I got to use everything that I was feeling as Nina, you know. Um, and again, I did a lot of research because the director based Alan's character of a couple of real characters. Oh wow. So a lot of events actually happened and I saw the actual characters and I saw them speak and I studied them. And so that just like added a whole other layer, like, you know, it could very well happen what happened in that movie. You know, it did yeah. some some version of it did happen. So I mean and Alan is freaky. So I didn't have to act much. I would just look at him and he just you know, he's the nicest guy on the planet, but he just played that character. I, I thought he was scary as hell. Same. I mean, you're, 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 again, going into my next question, were you, <laughs> were you with Alan Leach? I mean, he is terrifying, as you said, but, and you said you guys met when you first got to Canada, you know, so creating this sort of rapport, do you guys kind of like separate from each other and say like, I don't want to get to really know him. I'm not going to go out to dinner or lunch with him because the less I know, the the more frightened I will be when I get on set. Or is it, no, we actually have to talk this over and block out how everything's going to happen. So we had to create a rapport. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before. We met in the lobby for the first time. I flew in. I met him in the lobby with the director and the producers. And it was like a a Western, like a standoff. We were just both standing there looking at each other for five minutes and nobody said anything, yeah. you know, and I was staring at him. I was like, is this going to work or is this not going to work? And he's staring at me and he's like, is she is, you know, and then after five minutes, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is totally, yeah, we, we, we've got it going on. <laughs> and then, um, you know, we did a lot of rehearsal and there's a lot of blocking. Yeah. Um, in in this movie especially later towards the scene i mean we had to rehearse all of the blocking and a lot of technical things and we you know uh had a day or two i think of rehearsals and um you know we did go out for dinner the first night um i tend to for a character like that after that i could just kind of stay for myself yeah. i don't do a lot of social things i just kind of had to uh um take the space for myself so i didn't you know i didn't do a lot um uh, you know of socializing but we did connect we did talk a lot about the scenes we talked about a, a, a lot about the things and you know he's he's just a sweetheart I mean he's the guy that would buy me a green juice because he knows I love green juice and we're in the middle of nowhere and he managed to get his hands on a green juice wow. you know he's that kind of guy he's just he's a sweetheart and and he just uh, is very respectful um you know well, whenever it came to the last scene and there was some stuff some uh, without give it away some violence there and he just really you know I think take care of his co-stars and he's just a pro I mean I have nothing but good things to say about him yeah awesome yeah. Uh, so it, well and you've done action you've done some other you know stuff but I wanted to sort of ask you too genre wise I mean for you, is it like, is there any genre that you haven't done yet that you're like, man, I want to do, excuse me, I want to do more of that. I mean, it seems like you would be a perfect fit for horror films. It seems like maybe even rom-coms. Do you, are you like, no, I, I'm not going to shy away from any genre based on my past movies that I've been in and, and try me out for anything? I'm pretty open. If it's yeah. good, it's good. I mean, if the script is good, if the character has a great arc, if it, some something I can sink my teeth into, 
I'm I'm down uh wh whatever it is like I don't necessarily care too much about the genre except you know horror movies it's it's hard for me to watch I mean even when I watched Cold Meat by myself I forgot I was watching myself and I screamed and jumped I was like <laughs> on my couch I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like Nina it's you you know what's coming yeah but I just there for a second like I'm not a uh you know so so you know like I don't like watching them so much because um my skin is very thin when it comes to that and my imagination is a little crazy yeah. but uh yeah I'm open I am totally open um to awesome. do yeah anything Awesome. All right. Well, uh, Nina Bergman, thank you so much for talking with me today. Cold Meat is going to be in theaters February 23rd. We can't wait for everybody to see it. I am telling the world to go see this movie. It's so cool. I loved it. Congratulations. And thank you so much well, for talking with me today. Thank you. No, it was my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me.